Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Devin Wilkie, and I'm presenting my capstone on the encyclopedic narrative, its purpose and plausibility. The term encyclopedic narrative was first used by Edward Mendelssohn in his 1976 essay, Gravity's Encyclopedia. In this essay, he outlined the purpose of the project as an attempt to render the full range of knowledge and beliefs of a national culture. From my research, I've distilled the many characteristics of the encyclopedic narrative into two key elements, the selection and the organization of information. There are a number of other elements which have appeared throughout my research, but these tend to be peripheral to this central purpose. In evaluating the concept of the encyclopedic narrative, we discover a conflict between two written forms. The nonfiction reference encyclopedia is a compendium of information authored by numerous contributors. This results in a work which is generally unreadable from cover to cover, used instead by those seeking specific information. The novel, short story, or other work of fiction generally features one author and a narrative structure, giving it a sense of coherence that allows procedural readability. In this regard, the encyclopedic narrative necessitates a sense of reconciliation between these two literary forms, the fiction and the nonfiction. During my research, I examined two types of fiction narrative that are seen as encyclopedic. The novel I chose is Thomas Pynchon's Gravity's Rainbow. This work follows the pursuit of Lieutenant Tyrone Slothrop through World War II era Europe after it is discovered that his sexual exploits seem to predict the locations of future rocket strikes. The novel weaves in detailed descriptions of various technologies and art forms, which range from ballistics to aerodynamics to behavioral psychology to paranoia to sexual preferences to theater. Jorge Luis Borges' short story, The Library of Babel, is a description of an infinitely large and rigidly structured library, which is believed to contain all possible information. This piece accomplishes the encyclopedic purpose through signifying a totality of information, rather than by actually containing that information. As I mentioned before, selection and organization of information is central to the encyclopedic project. Because we're examining a narrative form, which is an account of connected events, there is a deliberate organization which occurs in the order in which the characters encounter the information presented. This imposes a structure on the work in Gravity's Rainbow through the experiencing of information, and in the Library of Babel through the rigid structure of the library containing the information, to give consistency to the narrative. Because the experience is limited to one character or story, information is necessarily left out. This gives significance to the information selected, as I'll examine in a moment. First, though, I'll discuss the organization of information. <clears throat> this quotation from Gravity's Rainbow illustrates the aroma of military captain Pirate Prentice's banana breakfasts and the organization of the information it presents. Now there grows among all the rooms, replacing the night's old smoke, alcohol, and sweat, the fragile, mesacious odor of breakfast, flowery, permeating, surprising, more than the color of winter sunlight, taking over not so much through any brute pungency or volume as by the high intricacy to the weaving of its molecules, sharing the conjurer's secret by which, though it is not often death is told so clearly to fuck off, the living genetic chains prove even labyrinthine enough to preserve some human face down ten or twenty generations. Is there any reason not to open every window and let the kind scent blanket all Chelsea as a spell against falling objects? So the information here weaves through various elements, from intrinsic to widespread, starting by introducing the scent, then its effect on the environment, replacing the previous night's odors, then its molecular structure, then its history as an ability to preserve genetic material down many generations, like that of a human face, and then finally its protective powers over the individual's awareness, distracting people from the fear of rocket strikes. Organization is more conspicuous in the Library of Babel, as Borges describes the precise structure of the library. Early in the story, he writes, There are five shelves for each of the hexagon's walls. Each shelf contains 35 books of uniform format. 
Each book is of 410 pages, each page of 40 lines, each line of some 80 letters, which are black in color. This quotation provides a rigid structure to the library that is imposed or prescribed by the author or maybe by the architect of the library to create structure from a totality of information that is otherwise unstructured. Pynchon addresses this process through a description by one of his characters of the function of a Rorschach-like inkblot test. Dr. Rosa Volgi states that when given an unstructured stimulus, some shapeless blob of experience, the subject will seek to impose structure on it. The information of banana breakfasts or of a complete collection of written information is not initially organized, so the individual or the author must organize it. Unfortunately, it can be difficult or impossible to present a totality of information in an organized and meaningful way. As Borges writes here, a library which contains a potentially infinite number of languages will necessarily use the same words. While the word library means a ubiquitous and lasting system of hexagonal galleries in the English of the Library of Babel, it could have any number of other meanings in other languages, just as each word in its definition. Library could be bread or pyramid. Ubiquitous could be something entirely different. By containing all possible information, the library is almost meaningless. It is only by limiting to select information in languages that there is any meaning. The encyclopedic narrative acts similarly in that it is only in the context of the character or the story that the selected information has any relevant meaning. Language, of course, is the primary medium through which the presented information is selected and organized. However, the formation of language also illustrates this selection and organization. The character Chicharin encounters a community attempting to oppress native peoples by imposing a new Turkic alphabet as their means of communication. However, as Chicharin starts a political dispute that leads into a rebellion, print just goes marching on without him. Printed posters go up in the cities, in Samarkand and Pishpek, Verni and Tashkent. On sidewalks and walls, the very first printed slogans start to show up. The first Central Asian fuck you signs, the first kill the police commissioner signs, and somebody does, this alphabet is really something. The alphabet and the language used to oppress the natives becomes their tool for asserting their power over their opponents. They contribute to the meaning it can convey through the selection of its use and their reorganization of language to make these signs and slogans. <clears throat> Using some of the examples on the table to the right, Mendelssohn and a few other theorists came to the conclusion that an encyclopedic narrative both appears and is set near the originating point of a culture's sense of its own existence. For example, we can see that Dante's Commedia appeared near the beginning of a contemporary unified Italy's concept of itself, Ulysses near the beginning of modern Irish culture, Moby Dick for American culture, the Library of Babel for an information stratifying culture, and Gravity's Rainbow toward a new international culture. While this may not be necessary, it is important because the values illustrated tend to influence the creation of a culture. In the case of the language used in the Commedia, which then became the official language of Italy, the book may even influence the culture directly. Because the encyclopedic narrative reflects its culture through the experiences of the characters, it defines those values in a more personal way than a reference encyclopedia or a website may do, making it more relevant to human life as it expresses the synthesis of information from a single life. So, in summary, the key element of the encyclopedic project is information. The purpose of the encyclopedic narrative is the selection and organization of that information, of which language is an integral component. This is presented in the narrative form through the structure of the characters or narrator's encounters, giving it the context of human experience. That is my project. Thank you for listening.